Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, or still the voice of hardcore boxing should I say. Shout out to uh, the gentleman who's got the the shop in Cunningsbury, is it Dave, the Asian gentleman, uh, for giving me that for Christmas, thank you very much. Uh, I do spend a few quid in there, so it's nice when they remember you at Christmas, isn't it? So I had a chance to uh, try this now, and we'll see what it's like. Oh, that's not bad, that Rockinator, that's not bad. Tell you what I'm going to have with this, before we set about this next video. Yeah, it's this cheese, I don't know, it's like marinated cheese or something. So a bit of cheese connoisseurs in my house, but it's, uh, can you smell that Rocky? It smells nice, doesn't it? Me, uh, one of my relatives uh, gave it, uh, gave it me. You want to try that Rocky? Yeah. No? You don't want to try it? You like that? Now, partial to a bit of cheese with wine. Right then, straight into business, let's have a look. Joshua versus Pulef. Who cares? Pulef. Right. Pulef's 40 in next year. Right, so Joshua against Pulef. If Joshua gets beat against Pulef, where does he go? Where does he go? You like that, did you? Come here, come on. You like that, eh? Hey? Hey? You like that? If Joshua gets beat against Pulef, he, he's like, he's going to be in a mess in here. There'll be no rematch clause. Bob Arum's not daft. No rematch. You don't get a rematch with a mandatory fight. This is why there's always problems when somebody works themselves into position at number one. Because there's no rematch clauses. Carl Froch did it. When Carl Froch wanted to fight Carl Zaggy, Frank Warren wanted options on him. So if he beat Carl Zaggy, he had to fight him again and then he had to have a further two fights with Frank Warren. So what's the point in Mick Hennessy investing money in Froch's career if when he gets to world title he's got to fight for Frank Warren? So Carl said no. They went the mandatory route, they got into number one position, then they said Joe Calzaghe we want to fight you. Joe Calzaghe had nine months to make a decision on the last day, the 270th day, Joe Calzaghe vacated. Because if Carl Frotch fought Joe Calzaghe and he beat him, Joe wouldn't have had a rematch and Frank Warren wouldn't have been able to get the belt back in a rematch because when it's a mandatory position, when you force the issue, you don't have to have a rematch. You can negotiate one if you want, like Tyson Fury's team did with Vladimir, but they never had the rematch, did they? Tyson ended up getting a drug ban, vacated or retired, whatever it were, but mandatory positions can, they always they cause, they cause a lot of problems. Now, plus the pool left fight against Joshua, every promoter in the world can bid to stage that fight because it's a mandatory. Now, pool left saying he just wants to fight where the most money is. Which you can understand, can't you? Because Pulef's 
he's 39 years old, isn't he? So, 40 next year. He's an old man now, isn't he? Look at Ali when he was 38. He was shot to bits, wasn't he? We've just seen David A fighting, haven't we, at 37. 37 30 years of age. What were he like, 37, 38? He was shot to bits, wasn't he? You know, you can't do things that when you are at 39, 40 years old that you could when you were 29. So, you're 10 years older than your peak, aren't you? But Anthony Joshua, he loves them fights, doesn't he? You know, these fights against fighters that are not at the peak. I mean, who was he really beat? Who was at the peak? Joseph Parker. He was a stinker, wasn't it? Ruiz, that was a stinker as well, wasn't it? Stinkers. Joshua's the new stinkinator. So you don't want to fight anybody. Pulef, I think that's a risky fight for Joshua. And I don't think they'll risk it. I think they'll vacate and they'll they'll spin something like, well, you know, it's not about belts now. It's about legacy and it's about fights. Yeah, because he's been beat by Ruiz and Eddie Earn knows that Joshua can get beat at any stage. So why risk it with a mandatory fight? They're going into the fight and the chips are stacked against them. If Joshua fights Pulev, there will not be no rematch closing that fight because it's Bob Adam they're dealing with. So you can have, he's either going to vacate and then and try and put pressure on a Wilder Fury fight. But Wilder and Fury are tied up for this year now, aren't they? So why would Joshua be calling them out? Like Dillian White, he's calling them out, isn't he? Dillian White calls everybody out, doesn't he? But who do we get? Povetkin. He's 42 next year. 42 year old next year, Povetkin. 42 next year. So, Povetkin's an old man. So, is he going to fight Dillian? Probably. Would he fight Andy Ruiz? A fit Andy Ruiz, which, with Teddy Atlas as his trainer, beats Dillian White. That's my opinion, I'm entitled to it. A fit Dillian White beats Joshua. So I don't know where I don't know where it's all all gonna happen. I don't know where everything's heading, sorry at the moment, but there's a lot of permutations and it's just up to us to try and guess in it, but I'm just trying to guide you. So like I've just said, a mandatory position is a strong position for Pool F because he's got there. Now if you remember Yui Fury could have been in that position if he'd have beat Pool F, couldn't he? Now, I was proud to say that I helped Yui Fury with Dennis and Peter Fury get into that position. Proud to say I played a little part, but it didn't come off, did it? He never come off for Yui, but it's a shame. But Yui will come good at end, so people need to get off his back. Keep digging Yui out. Yui can fight. Some fighters have a problem transferring what they do in gym to doing it on the big stage but you if you it goes all the way what do you want to drink of wine now there's some wine no you don't want no wine what do you want some more cheese another piece of this cheese come on then that's what you want isn't it There you go. You like that? It's like a cheese with square <coughs> square pieces of cheese in like a marinated vinegar though. Spicy. But I'm a stilted man myself. <coughs> you keep licking your lips, that's spicy. I give Rocky of a, a king prawn, but it was a vindaloo king prawn, and uh, he shot downstairs. He had his head in his bowl. I <laughs> poured all cold water in his bowl. He just put his head in it, didn't you, mate? Right. But so I suppose that's that covered the Joshua situation. <clears throat> we pool left. The big porky prediction. <coughs> The big prediction, <coughs> oh my god, my throat's burning with that. <coughs> you alright, mate? That's hot, that wasn't it? 
she gave me a trying to poison me. My prediction on that is that Pula and Joshua, I don't know if it's going to happen. If it does happen, how can we get behind Joshua for that? Who, in their right mind, would want to pay a load of money to watch Joshua against a man who was pushing 40 year old? But well, we've already seen him fight Povetkin and we're pushing 40 year old. I mean, they're either fat as pigs or 40 year old who Joshua fights. I think till Anthony Joshua fights Tyson Fury and Wilder, I think he's always going to be there to be shot at by fans, isn't he? So he's in a no, you know, win situation. But they keep saying they're going to fight these people and they're leading fans on. But I'm not so sure if Joshua's as popular as he's making out in this country now. I think that people might have just seen through him. But who knows, he's got a big promoter behind him and he's got a lot of power, so we're going to see, aren't we? But we're going to see. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Right. You want to go out, Rocky? Rocky.